says the children of Israel, you are an holy people. Come on. Unto the Lord thy God. You are holy unto God. So why are you suffering here in captivity today? Why are you at the bottom of society here today in Charleston, South Carolina? God said what? For thou art an holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. You are holy people unto God. Come on. The Lord thy God have chosen me. God chose you blacks here in Charleston, South Carolina. Don't ever walk away thinking that you're just a nigga. Don't ever wake up thinking that you're just a black man or a black woman suffering here in America. You're God's chosen people. That's who you are. But there's a reason that you're going through what you're going through. There's a reason God had to put us in slavery because we disobeyed his words. Understand and follow me, bro. Come on. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men that stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues. But who's gonna rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg. Charleston and Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready, we are coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non- Violent, 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 Haitian, I'm gonna show you something. What about you? What's your nationality? What nation of people do you come from? She said her father's Haitian. What would you what would your father be considered? African American or black? You too? This brother right here too? Your your father would be considered a Haitian? Okay. So when we ask you what's your nationality, your nationality is based off of who your father is. All right? That's in the Bible. Y'all believe the Bible? All right? You know this book? This book has been around for how long? Forever. Our forefathers wrote this book for us so that we can remember ourselves in the last days. You understand? I want you to pay attention, sister, because when you say that your father is considered a Haitian, that is a name that was acquired in slavery as well. What you really just said is that your father is an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. That's what the Bible calls him. Now, I'm going to show you something. I want y'all to pay attention. Listen good. How you doing, brother? All right, doing good. Listen, I want you to listen real good. We're talking about nationality. Why is nationality important in Charleston, South Carolina? What is the most important history here in Charleston? Slave ships. The slave ships docked right here in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, I'm going to show you what God says. This is how you know who your father is. Read. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigree. What is a pedigree? A pedigree is a, is a bloodline. That's how you determine what type of uh, a dog it is. You determine the you determine the dog's uh uh, uh get, right by his by his pedigree his bloodline. That's where you get uh, uh red nose. That's where you get uh, German shepherds. That's why you, that's that's the bloodline. So God said the children of Israel, who is you, who is our people, who is you and, the, and, and your daughter right there. That's your daughter. God says we came together during this time and we declared our pedigrees, our bloodline, after their families by the house. So your father determines who you are. Right. The man determines the bloodline. Right. So when you say you're Haitian, when you say you're Haitian, you're not really Haitian. Somebody turn this sign around for me. Turn this sign. You're not really Haitian. Come here, let me show you something. You can see this sign? 
What does this sign say your nationality is? It says Levi. You'll see that on the back of your flyer. Levi, you can put it down. Levi were the priest of Israel. Right. So when you pray, you hear the brothers talking about nationality and that we are the children of Israel, he that he Levi too? We got a lot of Levi down here. Dang, there's a lot of Levi in Charleston. Why? How did Levi get here? How did your forefathers get here? They say, they say through slavery. They say? No, it, it ain't what they say. Does history prove in Charleston, South Carolina, that slave ships came to Charleston? Does the history say that? That's a lie. That ain't no lie. We can go down to we can go down to the docks right now and see where the slave ships came in at. Can we not go down go downtown and see at the marketplace that used to be called the slave market? What do you mean that that's what they say then? Okay, I'm from okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You from Charleston? Okay, how do you know it? You own most of what? I know that you own you did own it before what? No, before before slavery. But you don't. But guess what? Do your people profit from what's going on downtown right now? Our people don't profit from what's going on downtown, so we don't own it then. We don't own it then. I'm going to show you something. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. When you say, when you say that, when you say that, uh, history, the history in Charleston, South Carolina proves that slavery happened here. We got multiple, multiple, we got years, hundreds of years of history of slavery in Charleston. You got slave plant, are there not slave plantations still in Charleston, South Carolina right now? Are they still here? You got other nations, they travel from Australia. They come from Europe. They come all over to, to, to Charleston, South Carolina to view what they did to your people. But you say that's not true? What's wrong with this brother? No, 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 no. I'm gonna no, show no, you something. No, what I said, I said, what they tell you is a lie. I, I, everything that they say is a lie. We don't believe nothing they say, but we believe what the Bible said. We believe, we believe what this Bible said. But you quoting their history, though. No, I'm quoting the Bible history. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse uh, uh 45. No, give me six. Give me, give me 64. Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. I want you to tell me that this happened, sis. Hey, sister, sister and brother right here, I want you to tell me that this happened. I'm going to read it out of the Bible. I want you to tell me that this happened in South Carolina. Hey, right here where we're standing at in Charleston. Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. Yeah. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So the God said he was going to scatter a certain people among all people. Everywhere you go across the earth, can you see people like you? In every, in every country, are there people like you? God said he will scatter a certain people across the earth. Come on. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. So God said from one end of the earth until the other end of the earth, I'm going to scatter this people. I'm saying this people for a reason. I'm going to show you why in a minute. Read. And there thou shalt serve other gods. He said when you get to these lands that I'm going to scatter you to, you're going to serve other gods. Come on. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. I'm going to go back and explain all this. Keep reading. And among these nations shall thou find no ease. Ease. What is ease? What does it mean to find ease? Brother and sister, what does it mean to find ease? What does that mean? Rest, relax, pleasure. God says, when I scatter you amongst all the nations of the earth, when you get there, you ain't going to find no rest. Who is this talking about? Us. That, that, that what? That came into slavery. I'm going to show you. Read. I'm not giving you none of my words. It's written in the Bible. Read this. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. God says the sole of your foot ain't going to have no rest. When your people came into slavery in Charleston, South Carolina, how much rest did they get? They ain't get no rest. They got very little rest. They had to work day in and day out. They produced all of the cotton that was produced in, in, in South Carolina, right here in Charleston. The majority of it was produced right here. We worked fields day in and day out for hundreds of years. Read on. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. He says when you get there, you're going to have a trembling heart. Why would you have a trembling heart for your daughter if this was slavery time? Why would you have a trembling heart, trembling mind for your daughter? Huh? 
Because the slave owner could do what to your daughter? They could take her and do what? Whatever they wanted. Right. Sell her to somebody else, rape her, kill her. They could do whatever they want. God said, when you get there, you're going to have a trembling heart. Read. In failing of eyes. In the failing of eyes because you will see your sons and daughters being taken away from you and there will be nothing you can do about it. Come on. In sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thou shalt fear day and night. So we fear day and night for our lives in slavery, did we not? Do we still fear day and night in America today? You fear for your daughter right now. You don't know what's going to happen as she's growing up in this crazy society that we live in, right? You fear, we fear for ourselves now. Come on. And shall have none assurance of thy life. Meaning, you could be put to death at any moment. You see these cops right here? They could, they could mysteriously get a call about someone that looked like you, roll up on you and shoot you down in the street and be justified here in America. Right. Read. In the morning thou shalt say, would God it were even. And at even thou shalt say, would God it were morning. Chapter 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So now, when we're reading about the children of Israel in the Bible, y'all listen. When we're reading about the children of Israel in the Bible, you remember they walked into Egypt the first time because their brother Joseph was there, right? So God says, and now I'm going to bring you into Egypt a second time, meaning again. But how are we going to get into Egypt? What is Egypt? Let's find out what Egypt is. What does the Bible say Egypt is? What did the children of Israel do when they were in Egypt? What did they do? What were the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh, what were they? They were what? They were slaves in Egypt. Right. So now God is telling a people now that he's telling the same people, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again. I'm going to bring you into Egypt again. How? With ships. Hold on. God says, I'm going to bring you into, into Egypt again with ships. Right. Did the children of Israel need ships to go into Egypt the first time? They walked the first time. And what were, what were they in Egypt? They were what were they? They were slaves in Egypt. Right. Now let's let's let the Bible say this. Read uh, Exodus. Get that in Exodus real quick. Read Exodus chapter twenty and verse two. Bring it out. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So God says, I brought you, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. What did what did he equal or equate Egypt to? I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of what? He equated Egypt to bondage. Right. So now, when we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Right. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Into what? Egypt again. Into Egypt again a second time. So he's talking about, so who is he talking to? If he's going to bring you into Egypt again, that means he put you into Egypt before, one time before, right? So now, make it make sense. If, he, if the people that he's talking to went into Egypt the first time and they walked there, this time he said, I'm going to put you into Egypt again. How? With ships. With what? With ships. By the way where I speak unto thee. He said, but this time I'm going to put you into Egypt and you're going to go by ships. Right. What people went into, what was Egypt synonymous to? Bondage. What people went into bondage on ships? Come on now. Let's see what the Bible really saying. What people went into slavery, into bondage that the Bible is calling Egypt on ships? What people? Our people. Our people. No other people did that. No other people went into bondage, into slavery on ships. So who is the Bible talking to? Who's talking to who? Is talking to us. Right. We are the children of Israel. We are the ones that came into slavery in Charleston, South Carolina, on those slave ships and docked right downtown at the slave market right. on those slave ships. Right. That's your forefathers and your foremothers. Right. So when you say your nationality is black, 
there's no such thing as black. Right. When you say your nationality is African American, there's no such thing as African American. Right. When you say your nationality is Haitian, there's no such thing as Haitian. Right. Your oppressor gave us, gave us those names. Right. Your real name is a, a, uh, an Israelite of the tribe of Levi. Right. Your real name is an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. Right. You, brothers and sisters, you are Israelites of the tribe of Judah. Right. Why? Right. Because God put the Israelites in slavery. Right. It was the Israelites that he was talking to. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah. Let's see who the Bible is talking to. Is the Bible talking to the whole world? Is it talking to the so-called white man? Is it talking to the so-called Arab man? Is it talking to the Chinese man? Hell no. The Bible has always been talking about you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Moses spake to all Israel because every nationality is in the Bible you will not find black in the Bible right. you will not find African American in the Bible right. you will not find Haitian in the Bible right. you will not find Jamaican in the Bible right. what you are talking about is your true nationality right. that you are an Israelite of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel right. the Bible is talking about you Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. The Bible is talking about you. You blacks here in Charleston, you Hispanics, you Native Indians, you are the children of Israel. It is high time you wake up and remember who you are. You got slave ports right downtown that tell you who you are. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. But thou art an holy people. God says the children of Israel, you are an holy people. Come on. Unto the Lord thy God. You are holy unto God. So why are you suffering here in captivity today? Why are you at the bottom of society here today in Charleston, South Carolina? God said what? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. You are holy people unto God. Come on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. God chose you blacks here in Charleston, South Carolina. Don't ever walk away thinking that you're just a nigga. Don't ever wake up thinking that you're just a black man or a black woman suffering here in America. You're God's chosen people. That's who you are. But there's a reason that you're going through what you're going through. There's a reason God had to put us in slavery because we disobeyed his words. Understand and follow me, bro. Come on. To be a special people unto himself. Now you got to ask yourself, brother Haitian, Haitian, so-called Haitian man, this brother right here, get his attention. So-called Haitian man, Kevin. What is his name? Kevin. I'm talking to Kevin. Now you got to ask yourself, if God says we're special to him, why do we suffer the atrocities that we suffer? Make it Yeah. So God, the question, now listen to my question, Kevin. Listen to my question, Kevin. God says we're special unto him. So why, if, if God chose us, because he said he chose us, right? Read it. I'm going to listen to this. Watch this. Read it again. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people. Wait a minute. If God chose us to be above all people, why are we at the bottom of society waiting on a bus? Why are we at the bottom of society waiting on EBT? Why are we at the bottom of society begging for jobs, begging for food, begging for housing? If the creator of heaven and earth made us special to himself, why do we have to beg for these things? That should be the question that we ask ourselves. And how do we fix it? Here's your answer. Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. All of the answers are in the Bible. Your forefathers wrote this so that you can remember in these last days who you are. So that you can come back to your history and say, you know what? The Bible is talking about me. It's talking about us as a people. What took us away from what God intended for us was us going against his words. So if we want to fix our situation, if going away from his words 
put us in the situation, what's going to put us back in a good situation? Going back to his words. These are his words. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what did the Lord thy God require of thee? Remember, it's the children of Israel that he's talking to. He put the children of Israel in slavery. He ain't put them in slavery. He good. He happy. Bills paid. Got food in his house. You know what I'm saying? His kids probably going to a nice college somewhere. He's fine. He might be a damn tourist. Who knows? Hey, he he's suffering zero affliction in America. He, he can walk up and down the street. Nobody gonna say a damn thing to him. He ain't gonna touch him. You see that? Don't suffer in the United States in America. The only ones that suffer are the blacks. The Israelites. They're the only one. I'm gonna show you why. Watch this. Giving them everything. Right. You know why? To keep you oppressed. Uh-huh. They them all. Of course they did. They have to pay them off and put them in a position so that you never rise up. Watch this, read it again. And now, Israel, what did the Lord thy God require of thee? God requires something from us as his people that he chose. Come on. But to fear the Lord thy God. To fear God means God says, don't do that. Guess what you ain't supposed to do? You ain't supposed to do it. But our people. We don't follow that. We rebel against that. Read on. To walk in all his ways. God says walk in my ways. But do we walk in God's ways? No. We walk in the ways of America. America says, hey, Thanksgiving coming up. Halloween coming up. Hey, Labor Day. Labor Day is here. Time to celebrate. Christmas coming up. You need to go buy trees. You need to go buy a turkey. And you need to go buy costumes. And what do our people do? And we go buy our costumes, we buy the turkey, and we put the trees in our house. So is that walking in God's ways? Because you don't read none of that in the Bible. God says to walk in his ways, come on. And to love him. How do you love God? By doing what? By keeping his commandments. That's how you serve God, you love him. By keeping his commandments, come on. And to serve the Lord thy God. Which is keeping his commandments, come on. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord. That's to sum up the, everything that I just read. If you want to come out of the condition that you're in, you got to keep the commandments of God. Right. I'm going to show you an easy commandment. What's today? What's today, my brother? What's today? According to God, what's today? It's the Sabbath day. It's tomorrow the Sabbath day. So why in the world do we keep the, we, we think we're keeping the Sabbath day on Sunday? That ain't in the Bible. God said, that's who? That's white man stuff. That's the white man stuff. He is the one that will read the Bible to the slaves on Sunday. That's the only day that they, get, that they gave you off if you had a decent slave master. He would get you all to stand around and he would read one verse out of the Bible. Obey your slave master. Obey, right. obey your master. Right. That's what he will tell you. And you know what? That's what we that's what we pass down. But today is God's Sabbath day. What are we supposed to do on the Sabbath day? Right. Supposed to relax, bro. You're supposed to chill out. Read that. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Break it out. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You gotta keep the Sabbath day holy. How do you keep it holy? Doing words, studying. Buying? What if you go to the store? Is that good? No. <laughs> you supposed to do that? Yeah. What, what, what if you go to work? No, no, work. You supposed to work? work? That's in the Bible, right? We're going to read it. Come on. Six days shall thou labor. God says you got six days to labor. You got six days to labor and work. Come on. And do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Come on. And it. Thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. So God rested on the Sabbath day. On the seventh day of the week he rested. Now if you worked all week long, six days, you don't think you need a day to rest? Right. You need a day to rest, right? The Lord made heaven and earth in six days. Can you make the heavens and earth? No. So why is it so hard for our people to keep the Sabbath day? Because we've been taught. When, when, when do people get paid? They get paid on Friday, right? Why you think they? Why do you think they get? We get paid on Fridays? Because when you get your money, what you want to do? 
You want to do what? You want to spend that money when you get it on Friday. You want all day Saturday, you're going to go out and find, find a way to spend that money, right? Your, your oppressor knows this. They dealt wisely with us. They dealt real crafty with us. They understand that, look, if we put them in oppression, have a good one, Kevin. If we put them in oppression, if we oppress them hard enough, and we only pay them when they are at their last dime, when we pay them, they gonna go out and spend the money. They're gonna, so when we do that, we're gonna break the sack. Give me that to Judas, Judas 5. Give me that to Judas chapter 5. They understand and have created a mechanism in our mind to go out on Saturdays and spend money. That's why they came out with their brothers wrote that song. Friday night. Play. Just got paid. Play. It's Friday. If it's Friday night, guess what? That's the Sabbath day. Right. That's sun, the sun done went down. That's Sabbath day. Right. There should be no buying or no selling on the Sabbath day. That's right. But I'm going to show you what they did. Read this. Judith chapter 5 and verse 20. Now up. therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people. Read up to when Halafani say, who is this people? Read that. Verse 17. And whilst they sin not before their God, they prospered. So when we don't sin against our God, we do what? And whilst they sin not before their God, they prosper. So if you want to prosper in society, guess what you got to stop doing? Sinning. If you want to, if you want to prosper in this world, you gotta not sin. And pro prosperity don't mean being a millionaire. Prosperity doesn't mean having the final things in this world because technically, bro, this captivity is just a pit stop. Right. It ain't gonna last forever. Right. Right. We gotta stop focusing on being rich in this captivity. Right. We gotta stop focusing on having the final things in this life in this world right here because there's a different world set up for us when we keep the commandments. Everybody said they want eternal life, but they don't wanna do what's necessary to get eternal life. Right. Right. God says if you want prosperity, you gotta stop sinning. Read that again. And whilst they sin not before their God, they prosper because the God that hated iniquity. So the God that hated iniquity, which is sin, what? Was with them. He's with us when we stop sinning, bro. Right. So question my brother right here. What's your name? Eddie. Danny. Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, if you're in sin, is God with you? No. So like if you're in sin and you're sending up prayers, does God hear your prayers? Yeah. Yeah? What about what you think, Eddie? If, you, if you're in sin and you send your prayers up to God, does he hear your prayers? What do you say, Eddie? He still hear your prayers? Let me see. Uh, my sister right here. My sister right here. My sister right here, sister. Brother, let them let her pay attention. I got a question for her. At call for me. Sis, I got a question. If you're in the midst of sin, does God hear your prayers? That's what you say? That's what they teach us, right? Yeah, well, let's see what the Bible say. Where Eddie go? Eddie, come on here and pay attention, Eddie. Pay attention. You, you never heard this before. Read this. John chapter 9 and verse 11. Now we know that God hears not sinners. Wait a minute. So somebody in the Christian church done lie. Right. The Christian church been telling lies. What the Bible say? Now we know. Now we know. Come on. That God hears not Sinners. I ain't right there. That's in the Bible. God don't hear sinners. Right. He do not hear you when you're in the midst of sin. So you can be in the midst of sin and send your prayers up all you want. It's, 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 you, ever, you, ever, you remember them, uh, you remember them old uh, phone? The pay phone used to be on the, on, the, on the side of the road? That's like picking up that pay phone and the damn cord ain't, ain't attached to nothing. Right. Hey, the cord, the cord popped right here. Right. You're on the phone trying to talk to God, but ain't no, you ain't got no connection to God. You ain't got sin, done, it done snip your cord. Right. Your cord has been snipped. There ain't no connection to God. You on the phone, you on the phone trying to call God. Send your prayers up. Hello, hello. God, can you hear me? God don't hear you. Right. He don't hear you. Read it again. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God don't hear sinners. So when we go back, no, 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 finish reading that. But if any man be a worshiper of God. If you a worshiper of God, meaning how do you worship God? By not sinning, which means you're doing what? You're keeping his commandments. commandments. This whole thing is based off of commandments. Slavery happened to you, it happened to us because we broke the commandments of God. That's why we went into slavery. What is nation? Nation is family.
Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation time.